All right, so I have measured out 33 feet of ladder line. And I've got the uh, cutting board here, and I was just getting ready to figure out and cut out my piece that I will use well, for this end point. So I figure I'm going to probably put a couple of zip ties across here or maybe put a hole in the middle here and zip tie it like that and then zip tie across here to secure this to the board and I'll have my two terminals here so let's figure this out okay so I'm going to want to cut Probably about that far out. All right. And I'm going to do this just for my visual reference. So I know where the ladder line is. And I'll figure I'll punch a hole through here. So I'll be drilling a hole here for a zip tie, here for a zip tie. Terminals are going to go here. All right, then I need space for the balin, valin. Yeah, about so much. So I'll put my center for the coaxial connector here and then I'll just bring this straight down and I'll drill a hole here and I'll drill a hole here for an anchor point and maybe one in the center there too so that should be there so I'll cut that drill a hole here hole here hole here one, two, three, and then the big hole there for the connector. And that should be my piece for the end of the antenna. Alright, time to get the saw out and the drill out. Do some drilling and cutting. I won't be filming that. I mean, you know, you guys know what's going on with a hand drill and a hacksaw. So, we'll come back to the uh, assembled piece. Alright, the hardware part's done on the build, as you can see. We've got our SO239, I use that this time. Like I said, I'm building this as if somebody was building it to put up and stay up for a while. And we've got that all mounted. We've got the uh, ladder line affixed really well to this. I mean, that's plenty strong, zip tied there, and then across the wires here to pre prevent uh, side to side motion. So I was just getting ready to solder the connecting wires. Now, as I mentioned, I think in the design video, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be scanning it. Um, with the VNA directly. I don't want to have a ballon in there yet because I don't know what the impedance is going to be. By the way, interesting, there's been some uh, comments, really interesting comments um, on this video. Uh, several guys have commented, and I think correctly so, that the uh, at a half a wave, if the end of the feed line is shorted, then we will see a short at this end. And that might be true. That's probably true. And if that's true, which it probably is, um, then uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> Plainly put, it's not going to work. Uh, but there was another comment too, and I've had this thought. A guy said that he tried something similar to this, and uh, he found that it did work once he got out to... Um, well, he made the antenna longer uh, than a half wave, and he said about 30% um, longer than a half wave, it suddenly started to work, which made me wonder, 
and I'll have to do the math to find out um, what is the length of a 5 eighths wave on 20 meters. <laughs> you know, obviously, if um, if it's a short at the end and uh, that shows up as a short at this end, then as you move away from that half wavelength, the um, impedance is going to begin to go up. So there might be a magic distance or length where the uh, impedance gets up to 50 ohms and uh, what's going to happen at that point, you know? Can it be that uh, we'll hit a point where we've got 50 ohm impedance on 20 meters at something around 30% longer than a half a wavelength? Uh, and what will the SWR look like? So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of questions yet to be answered by this experiment. And it is, like I said, an experiment. So that's the fun about experimentation. Just tossing it together to see what happens. Okay. That's that line. You know, I should have sided the antenna wires first, or the feed line wires first. The ladder line wires first. There we go. Okay. Ugh, ugly solder joints. Let's just try to make sure we got a good electrical connection here. Like I said, it's just an experiment. We're going to end up changing it, probably changing everything anyway, maybe splicing on more wire to make it longer. And then I got to solder the ends together here to short it. And there we go. All right. Ah, we are built and ready to take it out and hang it up and hook up the VNA and scan it. Boy, I do not like that. But the electrical connection is good. It only has to be temporary anyway. Yeah, that's good. All right. Good enough for testing, right? I'll clean it up later after I'm sure what is going to work and what isn't going to work. But, uh, yeah, there we go. I got three holes in here so I can put a um, paracord through to hang this end, you know, to hook it to a stake or the bumper of the RV or whatever I'm going to anchor it at at this end. Um, this end here, I'll just run some paracord through the window and use that to hold up this end. I did that with the 40-meter uh, folded dipole and it worked fine. So that is 33 feet of ladder line. Shorted at one end, hooked up to an SO239 at the other, ready for connecting to the VNA and scanning. Well, this morning it was fairly calm, so I took the antenna out and I uh, hooked it up to test with. Uh, out at the back of the RV I have a mast, and I ran the end of it up the mast, and then down near the ground I anchored it to a stake where I put the uh, VNA and hooked it up on it. And then I pulled up the app and we did a scan. And I scanned the entire HF spectrum. Um, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Long story short. Uh, the commenters that were speculating about the uh, um, feed line acting like a shorted feed line, uh, yeah, I, I guess it did. I did see a dead short um, down around, uh, and I'm not, I don't have it in front of me, around 13 megahertz or somewhere, or lower. It was lower. Um, but uh, around the half wave point where it was cut for, um, it was a cut long. I always cut my antennas long and then trim them down. So it was almost up to 15 megahertz. Um, I saw a very, very high impedance, actually. I think somewhere around 17k. I've got the shot here of the scan. Uh, the SWR all across the HF spectrum was off the chart. It was um, well over 100 to 1. So yeah, it, um, it didn't have a sweet spot. There was no point across the spectrum where it acted like an antenna at all. And I decided, well, that's that. So, you know, that's how it goes when you're just trying crazy little experiments. Uh, you know, there's tools out there, software tools, commenters uh, on the previous video said, you know, what happens if you model this in EasyNEC or um, any of those utilities. I haven't played around with those yet. Um, I haven't found a good front end for NEC, for Linux, that I like, um, that I can get my head around. <laughs> They're pretty complicated. Um, programmers sometimes shouldn't design user interfaces. They should have somebody that designs user interfaces design their user interface. 
uh, then things might make more sense. But uh, anyway, I, one of these days I'll spend some time and, and get my head around um, the modeling software and play around in that some more. But uh, I kind of like the hands-on stuff. I like throwing the wire up and, and trying it out, you know, building something and just seeing what happens. So anyway, um, let's see. What else was there comments on? Uh, there were comments about the material. I said it was nylon. It's not. It's a, uh, a super dense um, a plastic uh, still fine. That's it's a good material for building your antenna parts out of um, those cheap cutting boards. Good stock material. So anyway, the end fed folded idea is a bust. Uh, and uh, as, as I said in the first video, if success or failure, you're coming along on the experiment, and here it is. What am I going to do with it? Um, I thought about trying to mod modify it to a Slim Jim uh, format or a J pole format for HF. Make a J pole for 20 meters. Looking at the model or the uh, calculation software I found on the web, uh, the overall length would be close to or just over 50 feet, which is over 15,000 centimeters. Um, uh, yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of ladder line to play with, um, and I've got this piece that's already cut for for 20 meters. It's 33 feet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of ladder line and convert it into a regular old folded dipole just like I made for 40 meters except this one will be for 20. And then I can do a series of comparisons. Uh, I have a standard good old fashioned 20 meter dipole up right now that's just two pieces of wire connected right to the coax at the center that performs pretty well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make this ladder line into a folded dipole and then I'm going to do some comparisons between the regular dipole and the folded dipole, both suspended from the same mast at roughly the same sloper configuration. Uh, and we're going to look at noise floor comparisons between a folded versus regular dipole. And we're also going to look at an interference um, canceling, you know, how well does the folded dipole tune out some of the locally generated noise coming from like the power supply in the RV. Um, and finally, I want to compare uh, harmonic rejection on a folded dipole. So I'm going to have my neighbor, um, if I, you know, I haven't talked to him yet, but I'm sure he'll do it, I'm going to have my neighbor transmitting on 40 meters on the harmonic um, uh, of where I'm tuned at on 20. And we'll look at how uh, his RF energy desenses the front end of the receiver on the regular dipole and we'll see if, it, uh, if that effect's greatly reduced on the folded. So I, I've got something I can do with this piece of ladder line and I'm looking forward to doing that test. Uh, in the meantime, though, I've got a radio to take a look at, uh, so we're going to do that in the next video. Anyway, thanks for riding along on this experiment. You know, even though it was a fail as far as what I wanted it to do, uh, there's, there's been a few comments, and I agree with them. There's no failed experiments. Experiments are what they are to determine, you know, will something work or not. And in this case, we determined it won't. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.